Shalom Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, and uh, this is probably a broadcast that I should be airing over on Danoon Institute. But, you know, Danoon Institute, I try to keep with just basic teachings there, and uh, so I apologize. I haven't loaded anything lately. I was going to load this one there, but I realized that some of the things that I needed to touch on would be a little bit more, well, considered by those that are not wanting to truly believe the Word of God, it would be considered too provocative. Uh, no doubt about it. And I'm telling you something right now. There's a lot of things that are going on that's very, very much bothering me. Uh, I will be sharing over on Patreon. Uh, should be able to record this tomorrow, some of my thoughts of things that are happening. Uh, Michael Brown, for example, boy, he has really thrown Rick Wiles under the bus. And uh, I think when you listen to this message today, though, from uh, something that happened to me last night, I think it'll really help open your eyes and to make you understand what we're looking at ourselves. Uh, last night, I had a very provocative dream. And in the dream, I was, um, I was in some type of a place and there was a huge stone in the floor. And the stone seemed to separate from the floor itself. And as it did, it's like I was in this stone going up as well as like other believers were in the stone going up. And the word that came to me that I could hear audibly in my ears was, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. And then I came out of the dream. And, uh, and so, and that's right here. This is the very scripture that came to my, that was, I heard audibly in my ears in the dream. Uh, verse 32, chapter 12 of the book of John. And if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. You know, this is exactly what the gospel really is. The gospel is about Jesus Christ. Yeshua, HaMashiach, the Messiah, right? This is what it's about. And when he was, when he died, when he was lifted up on the cross and he gave his life, he drew all men unto himself. There's no more two, two covenants. There's no more two kingdoms. There's one covenant. You see, the law was given as a tutor and it was given temporarily, but the Melchizedek priesthood was what was to be the eternal covenant that God gave. A covenant where the laws of God could be written on the tables of the heart and no longer in stone itself, right? Well, I knew that I had to find and look at the scripture this morning when I got up to understand why was the Lord drawing me to this? Why did he, why did I see this in this dream and then hear these words? And if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. These were the words that I actually heard in the dream so vividly. And so I went and I looked at the scripture where this was from. And it was very provocative too, especially verse 31. Notice verse 29 though. The people therefore that stood by and heard it said that it thundered. Others said an angel spake to him. Let me back up a little bit more. I apologize. Let's go to verse 24, chapter 12 of John. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall in the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. That was Christ prophesying about his own death, burial, and resurrection. And of course, him being willing to go and die and abide alone, he would bring forth much fruit, not just those that were asleep in the dust of the earth, but also for any that would believe upon him. Remember, he said to the Pharisees, except that you believe that I am, he didn't say I am he, as we see in the, in the English translation, he said, except that you believe that I am, you will die in your sins. Well, the I am is who spoke to Moses at the burning bush, right? This is, what, this is who it was. In fact, let's take a quick peek at that. And just as a reminder, uh, where are we? That's in uh, Exodus. 
right? Exodus chapter 3. And as we go down in here, uh, yes, we have it right here, okay? Ve'yomer Elohim el Moshe, Ihaye asha ihaye. All right? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. Ihaye. So let's say that Yeshua, Jesus, was speaking in the Hebrew language in that day. He could have been speaking Hebrew, could have been speaking Aramaic, could have been speaking Greek for all I know. But let's say he was. He would have said to them, except that you believe that Ihaye you will die in your sins. Now, let's go back and look at this. Except the corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. He that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it un unto life eternal. You know, he's speaking you got to keep in mind, Yeshua is speaking. He's addressing those that are following him at that time. But you can apply it to this day as well, because this is what I see on a regular basis. People are so much in love with this world and our lives that we have here that they cannot see the promise. They cannot see the very words of Jesus and what he says here. They, they build their treasures upon the earth. And, and that's very much true. Man builds his treasures right here. And Jesus says, where your heart is, there your treasure will be also. And so we're too busy about this life and making sure everything is going to fit our expectations here that we forget the eternal things. And as he said there, he that loveth his life shall lose it. Why? Because if you really, if this is the life you love, you're not going to make it. But he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. If any man serve me, let him follow me. Where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this cause came I unto this hour. Yeshua knew he was coming to the time of the cross. He knew that he was going to be betrayed by his own. He knew all this was going to happen, but he also knew that this had to happen in order to save many. Right? And it's just like, for example, when he did come and he did die, all these prophecies that were being fulfilled, like Zechariah chapter 8 that we go into, where they took a hold of the seat or the Actually, it doesn't say succeed. It says the wing of a Jewish man. And they say, we hear God is with you. What did they call Jesus' name? Emmanuel. God is with us. Wow. <laughs> and yet, today, we get this new gospel being preached. Which we're going to get into that a little bit. Right? New gospel out there now is no longer the gospel of Jesus Christ that he brought that liberated the people, but instead we're getting this back to the Talmud. Back to the law. Hmm. Father, glorify thy name, he goes on to say. Then came there a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified and will glorify again. Now they put the word it. The word it is not actually there in the, in the Greek language, but I have glorified it and I will glorify it again. The people therefore that stood by heard it said that, that, that it thundered. Others said an angel spoke to him. Jesus answered and said, this voice came not because of me, but for your sakes. Now, watch this. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. Wow. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. And if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. You know, this one blew me away. Because 
It's not only the fact that if he be lifted up, which is by the cross, he would draw men into him, but it also shows the change of the covenant. Because you see, judgment now is the judgment of this world. The fact that he died on the cross brought judgment, and 70 AD brought judgment to the temple and to the Mosaic law, to the Pharisaic law, Sadduceic law. It was judged. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. In other words, the prince at that time was the high priest. And he was cast out. Why? So that Christ could be lifted up. Notice, you know, John the Baptist really should have been the true high priest of that day. But what did he say? I must decrease so that he can increase. But today, the gospel message has changed. Now they want to lift up the rabbis. And they like to call them rabbi. You know, didn't Jesus say they to be called in the marketplace Rabboni, Rabbi. And he said, call no man on this earth Rabbi or your father, you know. In other words, don't be calling the, 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 the Pope's father and your priest's father. And don't be calling these guys over there that, that have their, their, their little credentials Rabbis. If he's your brother, he's your brother. If he's not your brother, he's not your brother. All right? And if you really truly love the Jewish people, then do me a favor. Tell them about the Jesus Christ. Yeshua HaMashiach, the Messiah, has already come. And He's already fulfilled the Word of God. You're not helping them at all by sitting there and covering all this up. They need to hear the Gospel. For it's life and the salvation. And not only that, because it says here, now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. So the prince of this world, the high priest who was called the prince, he's cast out. The, the, the priesthood is judged. It has failed, the, failed God, did not keep the word of God. Think, you know how the scripture says, and we used to blame this on the Catholic Church, and believe me, the Pope is guilty of this. They think to change the laws and the times, right? Believe me, the rabbis do that on a regular basis. Just look behind me and you can see the volumes of all the changes. And, and you know, and I used to always, I hit the Pope hard. And he deserves a lot to be hit on those things. But when you've got rabbis that sit there and say that even Moses ain't got to say, not even God's got to say, it's right, it's right there. It's in, it's in the uh, Sanhedrin one here. God has no say so on the earth. The rabbi has it. Really? Well, according to this here, it says, Now is judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. The high priest is done with. The temple was judged by Almighty God. You don't believe it? Jesus prophesied of it. All right? Matthew chapter 24. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said to them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no man deceive you. All right. Now, first off, you have to understand, the end of the world in here is the end of the age. And I realize you can have cyclical events, but listen, the temple was judged 70 A.D. And what's funny, they slipped one over on you. And you got a lot of these messianic leaders and rabbis, they've already got you out there repenting for the judgment that God brought against the temple and the Levitical priesthood that had corrupted themselves and brought idolatry into Israel. 
And, 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 and here's the funny thing. People are repenting. They got this huge movement that the Christians have to repent for the ninth of all for the destruction of the temple in 70 AD. Are you serious? When God says right here, when Jesus' own word says here, now is the judgment of this world, now shall the prince of this world be cast out. The judgment was the temple. Listen, you can go back all through the Old Testament. If you don't want to believe the New Testament, go look at the Old Testament. Jeremiah, you know, listen, Israel always hated their prophets because they told them like it was. God brought judgment. They spoke it. They hated them. They killed them, burned them, everything else they could do to them because they never liked the words that were being spoken by these prophets. So anyway, Jesus tells them, you know, he's coming out. They're showing him all these beautiful temple buildings out here. Look at these, Jesus. Look at this. It's marvelous out here. Barely I said either. There should not be left one stone upon another that it should not be thrown down. Right? Go on down. Let's go to verse 5. Right? For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of war. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Right? Let me go to the rest of it. For nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. That you was directly to his own apostles. And by the way, they were delivered up. They were killed. They were drugged into the synagogues. They had all these things happening to them even way back then. Now, I do believe there are some things here in Matthew 24 that we could look at as today or even a cyclical event. But when it comes to that temple being judged, it was judged. It was the over. It was not keeping the will of God. It was not keeping the word of God. So, if we're out there promoting even the building of the third temple, where are we standing with God then? Have we failed to realize what God did? And listen, when I say these things, you have to understand, I am for freedom of religion. Every man has a right. Jesus was the same way. It's a free will. God was always of a free willing heart. If you can't see it, okay, you can't see it. That's all right. For the Jewish people on the earth today, they don't recognize that Yeshua is the Messiah. That's okay, I understand. But there are thousands of them that are believing on a daily basis. I know a lot of times there's people, and I used to do the same thing. I'd go over here to Zechariah and I'd say, you know, well, you know, they're going to mourn for, for, for uh, 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 what is it, Zechariah chapter 12, I believe it is. They're going to mourn for, for, uh, for, 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 as, a, as a family that lost their only son. They'll separate each one to their own families, the house of David apart and the house of Nathan apart. I used to quote this on a regular basis. And at the same time, I always had to say it has to be a cyclical event because when we would go and look in the scripture, I knew that in the gospel of John, John quotes that scripture in Zechariah and says it was fulfilled. If the apostles saw it was fulfilled, how then can I put it in a future except it be a cyclical event? Now the problem is, I looked at that as a cyclical event because there were so many other scriptures that I thought had not been fulfilled yet, such as Zechariah 8, 23, where they take a hold of the skirt, uh, 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 the wing of, of him that is a Jew, and, and uh, 10 people of the nations take a hold of the skirt of, the, of him that is a Jew and say, we have heard that God is with you, uh, you know, show us your ways. And this is the big foundation today. This is the plumb line that Judaism stands on today and Messianic teachers are telling you, you've got to go up underneath the rabbis because it says it in Zechariah, the law is going to go forth out of Jerusalem. It did 2,000 years ago. But that was a Melchizedek law. And this is what the Qumranite community was looking for as well. All right? So, these things... My friends, many of them are fulfilled, and yet we're still looking for something else to come. And I'm going to go deeper into these things over on Danun Institute because I really need to bring this out. Let me, let me show you another one. This is Isaiah 26, right? Um, 
starting with verse 18 we have been with child we have been in pain we have as it were both fourth wind we have not wrought any deliverance in the land neither are the inhabitants of the world come to life wow in other words israel has gone through a whole lot during their time but that neither are the inhabitants of the world come to life one thing that the jewish people knew or the israelites knew there was a promise of the dead being raised <clears throat> but at the time when when Isaiah was writing this prophecy here you know he goes in all these things that they've gone through right you can back it up Lord in trouble have they sought thee silently they poured out prayer when thy ch uh, chastening was upon them because God was always getting on to Israel he was always con you know condemning them for their sins and their idolatry and their ungodliness he said, but they were they would pour out their prayer and their chastening was upon them. Like as a woman with a child that draweth near the time of her delivery is in pain and crieth out in her pains. So have we been at thy presence, O Lord. We have been with child. We have been in pain. We have, as it were, brought forth wind. We have not wrought any deliverance in the land. Neither are the inhabitants of the world come to life. So, in other words, they knew there was a promise that God had made of a resurrection. See, what does it say? And here, he's, here, here Isaiah quotes it. Thy dead shall live. My dead bodies shall arise. Awake and sing ye that dwell in the dust, for thy dew is as the dew of light, and the earth shall bring to light the shades. And I have it highlighted right there. Look at that. Yichayu metecha. Right. You remember when God breathed into the nostrils of Adam, Nishmar Chaim? Right? Ipak be pa'av Nishmar Chaim. He breathes in his nostrils the breath of life. Jesus, after his resurrection, comes to his apostles and he breathes on them and says, Receive ye the Holy Spirit. The Chaya, the life of God. His, when he was lifted up and he was crucified, he was the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world, but he was the Lamb that had the ability to bring back the life upon the believer. The Chaya. The Chaim. That kind of life. So it says, Thy dead shall live, my dead body shall arise and awake and sing, ye that dwell in the dust, for thy dew is the dew of light. Who is the light? There it is. Ota. Christ. He was the light. Okay? He is that dew. He is the former and the latter rain. Oh my goodness. Come, my people, enter into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. You see, now. I've even put this as a future prophecy, but this actually could be, because we see it's at the time of the resurrection, this could have been at 70 AD. Come, my people, enter into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself for the little moment until the indignation be overpassed. 70 AD. What did Jesus say to his, to his apostles and them? He told them, flee to the mountains, right? Hmm. When you there shall foresee the abomination of desolation spoken of Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whosoever readeth, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let them which is on the housetop come not down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. But pray ye therefore your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. For then shall be great tribulation such as not been since the beginning of the world to this time, nor never shall be. And except those days shall be shortened, there shall be no flesh safe. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christ, false prophets, and false, and show great signs and wonders, insomuch as if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Now, all that in purple is what happened 2,000 years ago. In the green, that's like, I got it green for like, go, right now. 
Now they're bringing you all kinds of false Christ, false messiahs. Why? Because the deadly wound of the beast is healed and that serpent is beginning to rise once again and giving power unto his people. Behold, I have told you before, Jesus says, Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. And you got on all these Israeli news channels over there in the Middle East saying that they got a rabbi talking to the Mashiach and the Christians are, Woo! Let's build the third temple. Woo! Something God's already judged. Let's build it up. They're really great. That's real good. Mm. Uh, I mean, that's like blasphemy if you ask me mm. remember the scripture here Matthew 27 here, here we go remember I, I quoted to you over here the dead bodies right raised up Matthew 27 there it is Behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain, and the top to the bottom of the earth did quake, and the rocks rent, and the graves were opened, and many of the bodies of the saints which slept arose, and came out of the graves after his resurrection, and went into the holy city, and appeared unto many. There you are. There you are. Now where are we headed to then? Where, where are we at now? Because we got all this stuff about the false Christ, right? I told you that was coming, right? The false Christ. Oh, back it up over here, Matthew 24. See, that if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. Yeah, they've been doing that for the last 2,000 years too, but now we're coming to the head of it now. Revelation chapter 13, And I saw one of the heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. That's why people like us, Rick over Rick Wiles at True News, don't, don't forget, you can watch it on his website. I know th th they have slammed that poor man. You know, I mean, for, for me, I'm constantly trying to tell you what to do to get our Jewish friends to recognize Christ. Because I don't, I'm not here to, to want to see people, uh, to, to, to hate Jewish people or anything like that. They're, they got souls just like anybody else and their soul needs salvation. They need to know the gospel of Jesus Christ. So we're not helping them. You, you don't want to just go out there and beat them up. You got, that's not that's wrong to do, period. The thing is, is to take the love of the gospel of Jesus Christ to your Jewish neighbors and friends. Right? Uh, but you got people out there accusing Rick right now, saying that he's going to cause bloodshed or something. Let me tell you something. These Noahide laws they got going on out there, right out of the Talmud, calls for the beheading, the bloodshed of Christians. And no, as Christians, and neither is Rick either, is not calling for violence against Jewish people at all. He's only there, he was just trying to get people to stop calling for the blood of Christians. You know, I mean, we can, we can say, okay, in the Holocaust, there were many, many Jews that were killed. There is no doubt about it. But many of them were sold out by their own countrymen as well. But when it comes to the Christians in Russia that were killed, 66 million? Or some much, much larger number. Nobody has a Holocaust remembrance for them. What happened to them? Right? So, this is the things that, you know, look, we got to have an equality on this. And, and I have nothing, you know, look, if the Jewish people want to study Talmud and things like that, they have a right to do that. I'm not here to condemn them and what their doctrine that they choose for themselves. What I am against is when you're allowing them to put the influence on government and to influence state policy based on Talmudic laws that call for the death of Christians. All right? We're not wanting to go enact laws that would cause them harm. We only want laws not to be enacted based on religious principles there that they have that call for the death of Christians. This is where we are drawing the line. And this, I believe as well, is what Rick was trying to do. All right? Now, it goes on to say here, 
I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. All the world wondered after the beast, and they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast, and who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given him unto him to continue forty and two months. All right. Well, you have to remember, a beast, according to the book of Genesis, the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. Jesus said in Matthew 23, Matthew chapter 12, it's also in the book of John, it's, it's in many of the other Gospels, that the Pharisees of 2,000 years ago, that, that, that they were vipers, serpents, uh, generation of vipers, According to the Hebrew math, Matthew, seed of vipers. And I know there's this there's very well-known minister who was brought to my attention that went out there and said, Oh, you've heard that false doctrine going on out there about uh, you know, that the the Kohanim and the Levites are a mingled seed. And it says that is a false doctrine. Okay, let's look at this. You want to call it a false doctrine, right? Read it for yourself then. So when you're being told that's a false doctrine, read it for yourself. Ezra chapter 9. The people of Israel and the priests and the Levites. Okay? In the Hebrew language. All right? Ha'am Yisrael ve'hakonim ve'halavim. All right? Right there. Kohanim and Levites have not separated themselves from the peoples of the lands. Lands being plural. Right here it's plural. Harots. Harots. Okay? That is plural. And I'll make it green so you can get it just like that too. Doing according to their abominations. If you remember, God said that the this is how they got the Nephilim in the land, according to Numbers 13, 23. Nephilim. Okay, like before the flood, that's in your Bible. You have giants if you only have an English Bible, but that's in the Hebrew Bible, right? And the, and the people of the lands were the who? The Canaanite, Hittites, Perzite, Jebusite, Ammonite, Moabites, Egyptians, and Amorites. All right, why? Because they went with the Israelites. When the Israelites went into captivity in Babylon, the Babylonians also took all these people that they had made covenants with. The house of Israel was already sent into exile for doing the same thing that the priests and the Levites did as well. Now that doesn't mean that every single priest and every single Levite mingled their seed with these peoples which were Nephilim descent. All right? But it does say right here, for they have taken of their daughters for themselves and for their sons. All right? Having children, having sexual relationships, with a people that we know according to the Word of God, and I will prove to you that it is in the Word of God, because I don't want this video to go out and then people say, oh, we didn't see anything in there. You didn't bring no scripture in there. No, we're going to show it to you. Because you got the people. Here we are, Numbers chapter 13, right? Go way down here to the last verse. Verse 33, I apologize. Verse 33. All right, there it is. Right there. Highlight it for everybody to see. And there we saw the Nephilim. All right? Not giants. Here it is. Et a Nephilim. Right? Bene Anak mean Hanafalim. Now, they, they, they messed up the vowel points there because Moses knew good and well that it was Nephilim. There's no extra Yod there between the Fe and the Lamed like there is up here. So Anak, not Enoch, Anak, he was from the fallen angels and of course he had sons as well so therefore they're not sterile so get rid of that false doctrine while you're at it as well all right so yes those people of that land and of course that was if you go back and read it it was the canaanite perzite jebusite and all of them right okay so as we go back to ezra then what does god say so that the holy seed which was the priest and the levites have what mingled themselves with the peoples of the land. They mingled what? The seed. All right? So let's look at it. Right here it is. Zarah, which is seed. HaKodesh, the holy seed. 
This is why God was so angry with them. Because Christ, he is that seed, singular. And don't listen to, to uh, Tobia Singer when he tells you, oh, there's no, there's no plural word for seed. Paul was just a dummy. Tobia Singer, shame on you. Because seed is plural right there in the Dead Sea Scroll, Zarim. Or actually, Zarim. They used the Nun Sophit instead of the Mim, pluralizing the word seed, also used for generations. So the Holy Seed, the priests and Levites, because they were to bring forth, Christ was coming through Judah. Right? You mingle those seeds in there. And see, you know, here it is right here. Be'ami. Ha, ha, so, excuse me, I forgot to do it right here. Here's the word for the mingling right here. Vehita arobo. Arob. Arob is the word for mingled. So you want to call it a false doctrine? You just called the Bible a liar then. You know? Look, I, I realize a lot of us make mistakes. I, I'm not here to condemn you, my brother. I'm just telling you, a lot of people make mistakes. I've made a lot myself, but we got to come around and get these things straightened out because we are too late of an hour to be playing church now. Way too late of an hour for that. All right? So anyway, so now, the dragon is being given power. They're, you know, the dragon gives the power to the beast, right? He's the one that gives them the ability to rise back up that mingled seed that was there 2,000 years ago. He had some little descendants come down through over the last 2,000 years. He's raising them up. But then there's given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given in them to, to 42 months, see? That's because the church is not awake. The church is given over everything and totally, it's just like they're, they've lost it. They've gone away from the Word of God. So they're the ones that are giving, the, 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 you know, the, and when I say that, let me tell you something. That was the dream that I had. See? I, I'll tell you that back. That's the, when the, the, the vision there when I'm, <laughs> they built the temple on the, on, on the Temple Mountain. I'm over on Mount Zion praying and the Lord tells me there's a man drinking on the mountain and you're to remove him. And at the same time, I knew that there was the evangelical people. It's actually the people that were involved with the Brownsville Revival. It was one of those speakers there that was involved in the Brownsville Revival that was speaking up there. I don't know if it was a dedication to the temple, what it was going on, but they had one of the, what you'd call some kind of evangelical movement there, only to find out later. I did not know this back in 2014 when this happened to me, but I found out later that same group of the Brownsville Revival is the group that is backing Donald Trump as president of the United States. They're the ones that put him in power. And then I see the scripture here. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. Because why? Somebody in the body of Christ have crucified Christ afresh and put him to an open shame. That's exactly what happened. Hebrews. See? And if they shall fall away to renew them again into repentance, seeing they have crucified in themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. Fall away. If you're going back into the law, you're falling away from the gospel. All right? That's exactly what's happened. So anyway, in Revelation, we see this. As it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them, and power was given him over all kindreds, tongues, and nations. And this is what's happening. We'll be sharing that with you over on Patreon. It, this, this Noahide thing law movement is growing in leaps and bounds. And who's backing it? Who's going to really be backers of it? Ministers. They think you got to do it because if we don't, there's so much anti-Semitism in the world, the Jews are in danger. The Jews are not in danger, my friend. What's endangering is the Christians because they're passing, you're allowing them to pass the laws. You have fallen away. You're crucifying Christ afresh and you'll crucify the saints of God right along with them. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose name are not written in the book of the Lamb, life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. So yeah. That's why there's going to be many in that day that will say, 
Did not we cast out devils in your name and all these great works? And you say, I never knew you, you workers of iniquity. Right? This reminds me, and I want to share this with you in closing. Therefore, whosoever heareth these, th these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. Christ is the rock. His, the house, the, his house is built on the rock. He's the temple of God. You are that temple as well because you're part of his body, right? And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell not for it was founded upon a rock. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened to a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. Building a third temple will be building the house on a sand. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell and great was the fall of it. Yeah. You could imagine that 2,000 years ago too. Great will be the fall of it. And it was. Because they built 2,000 years ago the Jewish people that did not believe the message that Christ had given. And they were given 70 more years after, you know, after Christ or I'm sorry, was it 40, 40 more years, I guess, after his uh, death and resurrection? And all the things that he said actually happened. Then came that judgment, and the prince was cast out. And Christ is set on the throne ever since then. But Satan is about to be loose down here once again. And who's given him the power? The backslidden Christians. And I don't know if there's any way out of that backsliding. I really don't. Let me remind you of this as well. When the morning was come and all the chief priests and elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. And when they had bound him, they led him away and delivered him to Pontius Pilate the governor. Then Judas, which had betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned and repented himself and brought again the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders. This is why I can't do anything to ever be a part of building the third temple. You sell Christ out when you do. I know that's flat, friends, but it's exactly what happens. All right? Listen, I know I've been hard with you guys this evening, but do know I love you. Do know I care about you. And I, like you, I've made a lot of mistakes as well. I was a very hardcore, I didn't think I was a hardcore Zionist, but I was. You know? And I still, still, love the Jewish people. I long for them to know Yeshua's Messiah. And I know that there are many Jews at the peril of their own lives are witnessing to their people and they're winning souls to Christ, but they're also spit upon, beat up, mocked, and made fun of. But that's the, that's the gospel. That's what we were called to do was to be a witness for Christ. We're not called to pray for a ninth of all, for saying we're sorry for the temple being destroyed. That was the judgment of Almighty God. And the prince was cast out. And there is a new prince, the Prince of Peace. The El Givor, the mighty God, that's Jesus Christ. If you want to support truth, I'll do by everything in my heart to tell you the truth. If you want to support the lie, you have a right to do that. And we just may differ. You may think that, that I'm wrong, and, and uh, okay, I, I appreciate that. But we appreciate when you stand with us as well. And we, we've been behind on getting letters out to people as well that, that write us in at our post office box, which will appear here on the screen here in just a moment. But I do want to thank you. I want to thank you. I'll put my screen up a little bit here to where we can make it appear. There we go. We can put that way. We can put the address there. I want to thank you. You can also visit our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org. You can donate there. Thank you for supporting the work we do. And no, I'm not going to sell you gold coins. All right. I did one other time. We, we supported uh, uh, a, a Bible selling one time on here to because it helped the ministry here. And, uh, and then more recently, I've done this EMP shield. Uh, I know some people have said that it's, a, it's a, some kind of gimmick. Uh, we, we are going to look more into that as well, and we will see about trying to get on someone that really knows about that. I believe it works, I mean, but hey, 
Uh, I don't know the science behind all of that, but I'll try to get all the answers for that. So if you want to hold up on getting one until we can get that information to you, sure, by all means do so. Uh, but anyway, we're here to tell you the truth with all of our heart. And believe me, it is not popular. So many people walk away when you're willing to tell the truth. But then again, there's so many people that have been hanging with us all these years that just appreciate the things we've said and done. And now they already knew and they are just happy to see that our eyes are coming open as well, coming, coming open as well. And I will tell you something, friends. This is not something that we get, you know, I go get out of some book or stuff like that. It's just as God began to open my eyes and open Yana's eyes as well, I just began to study the scriptures and go back and with an open heart really look to see. And it's so beautiful because now, like in the case tonight, last night, the Lord sp speaks to me audibly in the dream and tells me, and if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me shows me this interesting thing of the stone rising up out of the floor and it's like we were part of that stone and then brought me up out of that dream and and placed it in my heart i must go look at these scriptures that's where the message would come for today god bless you thank you for listening and pray for those pray for those two even people that are that are really going nuts out there that are supposed to be Christians, pray for them as well. But we're in a very deceiving hour. I'm Stephen Benoom with Israeli News Live. Good evening.